you say that a lot of us get trapped in this, you know, I mean, we've got this American way, right. We're going to work our butt off and, and, and you make a big point of saying that, Hey, working hard is, is great, but, but there's this hustle culture, which often leads us nowhere. Well, you just have to keep your eyes on the prize. And that is all of this money saving, you know, this stuff's important with GDP innovation growth. Yeah. All the things we talk about all day, this is a means and the ends is deep and meaningful relationships. And when people say money can't buy you happiness. That's bull****. There's research that shows that happiness, generally speaking, is correlated to the amount of wealth you have. The good news is it tops out once you, once you get to a certain level of economic security where you can afford a home, education for your kids, absorb an economic shock, good health care. And unfortunately, in a place like L.A. or New York, that's seven or eight hundred grand a year. Mm. But, you know, and there's also another myth. Uh, billionaires are no less happy than millionaires. They're not any happier. But once you get to a certain point, and this is obviously a good problem, but once you get to a certain point, you got to realize that money is the ink in your pen, but it can make chapters burn brighter and maybe you can write new chapters, but it's not your story. And the the research is definitive. The key to a happy life is deep and meaningful relationships. And I think of money as just something that makes it easier to engage in those relationships with an absence of anxiety. If I if I was economically strained, my ability to really connect and really enjoy my sons, it just wouldn't it just would be harder to 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 really engage in the joy of those relationships. It would be harder to take care of my father. It would be uh, I, I think it would put inject strain into my my marriage if I was economically insecure. But at some point, you got to realize, okay, the reason you work, the reason you save money, the reason you invest, the reason you're smart about money, is such you can enjoy and engage in what is what is the whole shooting match, and that is deep and meaningful relationships. And then flipping back, it kind of goes full circle. So if you want to be really wealthy, or if you want economic security, one of p- the pillars of achieving that are bringing real character and generosity to your relationships. And so it's it's like, what's the key to wealth? I can give you an algorithm that's pretty straightforward, and I have that algorithm in the book. But the atmospherics for it are building a life of, of love and forgiveness such that people want you to win. You acquire allies along the way. You have a real partner in your spouse who's pulling with you. You have people that want to give you the benefit of the doubt. You have people that want to give you investment opportunities, that want to loan you money, that that want to see you win. Um, and we don't talk about that enough in fan- financial literacy books. Show me someone who's difficult and is hard to, doesn't have an easy time maintaining long-term relationships. I'm going to show you someone whose economic security always trails their talent. I don't understand why we call that a soft skill then, right? I mean, there's this yeah. term soft skills, communication. That seems to me to be, Scott, what we talk about more than anything on the show. The value of community, the value of uh, successful communication, the value of getting yourself in the room and, and developing your own curriculum versus mm-hmm. letting somebody else do it. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that, and, and I talk about this, the first part of the algebra or the equation, if you will, is focus. And that is... I think young people, unfortunately, get terrible advice at schools such as mine, NYU. We invite two types of speakers, really interesting, accomplished people and billionaires. And we've just decided that billionaires have access into life. And they always end with this bullshit advice, follow your passion. And the guy telling you to follow your passion made his billions in iron ore smelting. And, and what <laughs> happens is kids conflate passion with hobby. And passions tend to be in industries that have a 90 plus percent unemployment rate. And if you're in the point oh 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 one percent of sports or fashion, fine, go for it. And people around you will let you know that you are, in fact, in the point oh oh one percent. But when someone tells you to follow your passion, just be clear, opening a restaurant or a nightclub or being a DJ, those industries are incredibly difficult to maintain a living in. And that's the bad news. The good news is that If you understand, if you have the discipline to get great certification, get a law degree, you understand tax code, you're disciplined, you can understand and articulate the intersection between tax and law and people's economics and organizations, and you're good with clients. Tax law, the best tax lawyers fly private and have a broader selection set of mates than they deserve. And those things, the accoutrements, the relevance, the economic security, 
will make you passionate about whatever it is. Being great at something that affords you relevance and economic security makes you passionate about that thing. So your job, your job is to find something in your 20s that you're really good at. Maybe you could be in the top decile at some point, maybe even the top 1%. In an industry that has a 90 plus percent employment rate, because you'd rather be in the top 10 percent of what I'll call an industry that maybe doesn't have the kind of curb sex appeal versus the top 1 percent. Being in the top 1 percent of sports or modeling or acting is not a good place to be. You have to be in the top 0.1 percent. Being in the top 10 percent of a profession or something that sounds a little bit more mundane is a life full of trips to Italy and taking care of your parents and having your weekends off and, 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 you know, getting invited to cool events. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the absolute, the return on investment of your human and financial capital is inversely correlated to the sex appeal of the industry you are thinking mm -hmm. about going into. You also make a point early in this work that mm -hmm. financial companies are often talking about your number and about working toward retirement. And you have this very bold statement. Okay, you're a guy that makes a lot of bold statements, but, but you have a very bold statement that you kind of, you want to burn this idea of, uh, of working toward traditional retirement. Uh, how come? Look, the, the, what you should be working towards is work moving. Uh, is it at some point your, your work becomes, something you enjoy versus something, you, you know, it's a, it's a want versus a need. I get to do exactly what I want professionally. I work as much, you know, I don't work 60 to 80 hours of work a, a week anymore. I work 40 to 60, but the difference is I used to work 60 to 80 hours doing I didn't really love. I mean, I was good at it, but I'm not sure I really loved it. Now I just only do things I love. And it's because along the way I, I developed those savings muscles and started and started, you know, started getting economic security. Work used to be awful for most people. We're depressed and anxious, but the reality is the majority of men did hardcore, laborious, dangerous work 100 years ago. So the idea that at some point you would get to stop doing this literally backbreaking work, that was the end state. That's no longer true. If you're talented or you can save some money, you can start thinking about spending your days not working, but involved in an, in an, in an avocation, that, an avocation that you really enjoy, but there is no finish line. The greatest increase in mortality for men is when they retire, when they lose their social network and their social connection and their purpose. You're never more likely to, to die versus where you were yesterday, your mortality rate, than when you retire. You add years to your life when you keep working. So the key is how do you keep working or or find purpose and do something that you really love. It might be nonprofit. It might be coaching basketball. It might be writing a sub stack on a topic that you're passionate about. And here's the thing. If you develop that savings muscle, if you develop, if you're smart about your investments, diversification, time, et cetera, you have the luxury of thinking, all right, my nine to five is going to start to have more purpose and be a function of choice as opposed to a function of just need. And that, that's a gift. If you can figure out something, if you have the flexibility and the economic security such that over time, okay, I don't need to make as much money. I worked in investment banking right out of college. All of my bosses hated it. They all hated it. None of them enjoyed it. I, I, I couldn't, I can't tell you one investment banker I worked with that really like thought, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> but they were making so much money and they had let their lifestyle creep up to their income that they were sort of trapped. So I could see they were really working towards retirement. Get me out of here. Put me on the beach. It's a horrible place to be. And that's, that's you know, okay, so you're going you're gonna to work your whole life and work, not enjoy your life as much until you're 65 and then hope you live another 20 years. So the idea is if you spend, if you keep your spending low, at some point, maybe in your 30s or 40s, you can start thinking about, okay, maybe what would happen if I... Uh, the world of making less money but doing something I enjoy more is now open to me. That's an amazing feeling. It's liberating. Scott, thanks again for mentoring our stackers. Again, I appreciate it. And, and uh, good luck with, the, with your next activity. Thanks, Joe. Congrats on your success.